today we shall see some aspects on malaria the disease which is very well known for most of the people just because of its signs and symptoms but a little i shall give you the introduction about malaria how the infection starts or how the infection is been initiated we shall also see the signs and symptoms and the treatment which is given for the malaria and lastly we shall see the prevention and precaution of malaria so i am professor shagalolu vivi dbf dhanand college of arts and science solapur from department of zoology about introduction this malaria was been formed by the word that is mala mala means bad and area means air the air which is foul or which is bad and according to that word the malaria is been given it is a mosquito borne disease and humans are infected by the bite of mosquito only the infected female anaphylis mosquito is responsible for transmission of this disease because the female only the female mosquito only feeds on the blood of vertebrates and the males they feed on plant juices that is why females are only responsible for transmitting this disease even if females are been responsible that female it should be infected means infected female anaphylis mosquito is responsible for transmitting this disease this is the figure showing the female mosquito arriving on the skin of the vertebrate and the second shows the sucking of the blood by this female anaphylis mosquito now we shall see the nobel prize in malaria where the discovery of this parasite in mosquitoes earned by british scientist ronald ross the nobel prize in physiology or medicine in 1902 and in 1907 alphonse leven the nobel prize winner for finding that the parasite was present in human blood now we shall see the uh, species which are responsible for causing malaria in all there are four species first is plasmodium falciparum second plasmodium ovale third plasmodium vivax and fourth is plasmodium malaria among all these four the most dangerous out of this is plasmodium falciparum because this disease or this species it infects or the infection straight enters into the brain which may cause fatal for the patient now there is a new species out of this four one more species the fifth species recently which has been seen is plasmodium nauvoski which causes malaria in macaques but can also infect human 
there is one more species this is the fifth species now we shall see how infection spreads in the first case first point the bite from the infected mosquito means mosquito is having the parasite inside its own body that is called as infected actually the parasite which is present is a protozoan that is plasmodium and that parasite is present inside the body of this female anopheles mosquito and when this infected mosquito bites at that time these parasites they start or after entering inside the body they start reproducing in the liver first they enter the entire circulation and then they start invading the liver and these parasite they increase in size they rear there they become dormant for few time and then they become activated they stay there they become dormant and then they go on multiplying that is the second point and in the third point the inside the blood stream there are rbcs further reproduction takes place and they start now invading the rbcs which are the rich source of uh, entire proteins and entire circulation which uh, gives us energy and also supplies us oxygen this cells are now going to get infected because of this parasite which is going to now infect this rbcs now in the fourth case this parasite will again reproduce more it goes on infecting more it goes on eating entire uh, the ready food material the hemoglobin which is present inside that is been eaten up by this parasite that is the fourth case it again goes on uh, reproducing more and in number and then their forms the gametes inside them the parasite now divides and this cycle which is present in the rbcs the infection it destructs and because of such destruction on in the rbcs there is the now symptoms which are been seen the hot fever or the cells which are being getting infected more at that time these symptoms can be seen that is why this uh, treatment for malaria takes a very long time to cure right from the infection there are no symptoms liver gets damaged then too there is no symptoms afterwards when the rbcs when they get infected when oxygen level becomes low when hemoglobin becomes low at that time you can see the chills and the fever high fever symptoms are seen at this stage in the rbc stage where the rbcs are been infected after this the dormant version of this parasites are again in infested or it has been taken up by another parasite or another mosquito will now come and bite this infected person because now this person is already infected now this infected man is having parasite inside him then again the another mosquito may come and bite and at that time when it is sucking the blood these again developed parasite will enter into the body of the mosquito uh, it takes two host to complete the life cycle it is a diagenic parasite one is man and one is mosquito now when such a infection is been seen these are the symptoms of malaria 
headache is there there are systemic fever muscular fatigue is there muscular pains are there there is also back pain in stomach there is nausea there is vomiting if more infection takes place spleen gets enlarged in uh, respiration there is dry cough and from the skin you can find there is chills means uh, the uh, person he f feels very cold at particular time and then after some time there is sweating there are different stages one is the cold stage where the patient feels intense cold vigorous shivering is there rigors are there you put on so many of the blankets but still he feels too cold and this lasts for about 15 to 60 minutes this is the cold stage and after this cold stage one more stage is there that is the hot stage that is also intense dry burning skin throbbing is there headache which this also last for 2 to 6 hours after that sweating also takes place means these are the changes cold stage hot stage and then sweating profuse sweating all these uh, symptoms are intense all are profuse and after profuse sweating declining temperature exhausted the patient feels very exhausted he feels very weak and then he goes for sleep which this last for about 2 to 4 hours these are the symptoms this is been represented in a different way high fever is there severe sweating is there chills cold vomiting headache tenderness weakness is there then muscle pains are there then he also feels very weak now when such symptoms are there naturally one goes to the doctor and when you say the symptoms or when the doctor knows about the symptoms high fever chills are there sweating are there recurrently these are occurring at the same time of the day maybe at 4 o'clock the same day next day at 4 o'clock same time you get this symptoms so doctor advises for collection of the blood where to be diagnosed you need a blood sam sample and this blood sample is been collected now when we go to the pathologist the pathologist takes the blood smear we shall see the procedure the second or third finger is usually selected for the prick or for collection of the sample then it is been cleaned by alcohol or spirit then puncture is made at the side of the finger at the top portion of the finger and third is gently squeeze towards the puncture site so that blood oozes out from the finger then the slide is always taken from the grasped or taken or handled by the sides of the edges and then the touch on the drop of blood to the side is done and it is spread over the slide either a drop of blood is taken or by using another slide a smear is been made and after observing under the microscope 
it has been seen that there are ring like structures inside the slide all the different rbcs are been seen but a uh, ring which is been observed that is the ring or it is the vacuole which is been made by the parasite because it has eaten up all the entire hemozoin granules or it has eaten up entire hemoglobin and the nucleus of that parasite is been seen as we all know rbcs of man or humans they don't have nucleus but in the malarial parasite the rbcs are showing one side a nucleus but that nucleus is about the parasite now by having such infections we know that we have to control the malaria parasite or you have you can control this mosquito by biting us there are two methods direct method is by killing the parasite itself and indirect method is to kill the mosquitoes now we shall see the mosquito killing can be done by using the coils using nets using the curtains there are some fumigants which can be used to or a repellent which can be used for driving away this mosquitoes then screening of the windows can be done then some of the fumigation can be done and in the pond if larvae are been present this larvae can be killed by cultivating the fish inside this pond so that life cycle will be stopped and no mosquitoes will breed there and that will help in preventing the bite from the mosquitoes or another method is to use protective clothing so these are few methods or pre for preventing the uh, mosquito bite okay apart from all this even if you are not been successful in uh, preventing this disease or in uh, treating or in uh, giving the uh, vaccination or any any other measures another last method is treatment there are different tablets which are been used for curing this malaria one tablet is quinine second is mepacrine third is paludrin mm. and fourth one which is more effective is daraprim which is more effective all these tablets they are made from kinkona bark that bark or the tree of kinkona its bark is content is been used for treating this malaria parasite after this last one fun fact which i want to discuss is do mosquitoes i told you that female anaphylas mosquito is responsible and most of the time we are been experiencing the bite of the mosquitoes it's not that all are been suffering from malaria from the same day of the bite it is because not all mosquitoes are infected the breeding places of this mosquito is the ponds ditches which are been left open for a longer time and near this marshy place near this watery place these mosquitoes they breed there and in that marshy in that water 
you find infected water which is polluted having large number of these protozoans and these are been now infected by this anaphylas mosquito one more thing about anaphylas mosquito is mosquito is carrying the parasite inside it inside its own body but remember the infection is in the man and not on the mosquito there is the change in the body temperature where the parasite uh, feels recognizes the change in the body temperature from cold temperature to hot temperature or from cold blooded to warm blooded because of which the changes occur in the physiological system the parasite continues its circulation and it continues its infection hope you have understood the life